Well, it's another beautiful spring day, and I've been checking that weather forecast. I stay on top of the weather forecast this time of year, and I did see that it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So it is Monday, and I want to make sure I get my seeds in the ground before a good rain. Y'all know that's how I like to sow my seeds. I always try to look at the sky and make sure we've got some rain in the forecast. That makes my job a lot easier as a gardener. Also, over the weekend, we had freezing temperatures. When we woke up on Saturday, on Sunday morning, it was 26 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm not sure how low it dipped, but we'll walk down to the garden here in just a minute and I'll show you how everything is looking. So I've got my water bucket here with my watering can and then I've got my seeds that I'm going to plant today. I'm going to do a little bit of harvesting. I have a knee pad and uh, my little hand rake. I like to use that just to kind of loosen up the um, soil a little bit if I need to. So whenever I go down to my garden, I always gather up my seeds first and I go ahead and I'll make out plant markers for them. So it's just easier for me to get my jobs done in the garden. And of course I showed you a lot of this in my earlier video on direct sowing seeds into my square foot garden. I'll also leave a link here for you on a video I did a couple of years ago to show you what I sow in the summer. So I direct sow seeds a lot during the summer. Perhaps you're in a warmer climate than I am. This will just give you some ideas of some things you can go out and start planting, such as cucumbers and corn and squashes and all these wonderful things that we like in the summer. But I can't do that yet. I still have about another month to go before I can plant my summer garden. So here are the things I'm going to plant today. I'm going to plant Swiss chard. I have grown Swiss chard in two different climates. So I grew it when I lived in Florida and I've also have grown it here in North Carolina. It's a wonderful vegetable to grow and it's very easy to grow from seed. So I do have some transplants in the garden that I started indoors, but that's really not necessary with Swiss chard. It's a fast germinating plant and um, really easy to grow. So I highly recommend that, especially for new gardeners. Now here's something I'm going to grow for the first time and it's called salsify and I've never grown it before. I think it takes about 120 days for it to mature. I saw a tip on growing this on YouTube. So I'll leave a link to that video if you'd like to check it out. And of course, spinach. This is probably one of my most favorite things to grow because my whole family eats it. And so I already have some growing in the garden. I planted some in early March and I planted some in later March. And now I'm planting some more. And this is kind of what you would call a successive planting. This is so I'll have it all through the summer. Um, probably up until about late June or July. At that point, I probably won't be able to grow it much more, but I explained that in an earlier video on how to grow spinach. But just wanted to let you know, I'm always planting that about every two or three weeks. I'm also going to go ahead and plant chervil. This is a little French herb. I planted some in March, but I had an animal go through that bed and they messed up my bed. So I've got to re-sow this seed. And I'll show you that bed here in just a bit. And I'm going to plant some more lettuce. I already have some growing and I want to go ahead and get some more in the garden. And also green onions. I love fresh green onions from the garden. I don't like them really much from the grocery store. But they always seem to be so overgrown and they're not crisp and sweet like I love them. <laughs> so I always plant these and I do these about every two or three weeks as well. So green onions I'll plant today. And of course carrots. I always plant carrots. And then also I want to plant some more dill. This is some seed that I saved from last year's harvest. And um, I have some that has germinated in the garden right now. There's a little bit, but I'd like to see more this time of year. So I'm going to go ahead and put out some more seed, especially since we're going to have a nice rain and I think it'll pop up in no time. So here's the garden and we'll just take a quick walk through here and take a closer look at each of the beds and see how the seedlings are doing. So this is the first bed. It, ha it was unprotected up until yesterday. This is when I wrapped some netting around it. This is the damage that was there before. So I would have protected this bed also, like I showed you in the how to control insects and animals in your garden video, but there's only so many hours in the day. So I left this one unprotected and of course you saw what happened. An animal got in there and messed up my seedlings. So I went ahead and protected it yesterday and then I went ahead and planted out some Swiss chard and just uh, various other vegetables. Here is the lettuce that's coming up in that bed. That's the one spot of the bed that was not disturbed. So those um, seedlings are fine. And then here's my little strawberry patch here. I have this one and then I have the one at the river. And I mentioned in an earlier video that I'm going to be making a strawberry fertilizer. I'm going to do it custom for my plants. You know, our gardens are as, as individuals as we are. So 
um, my strawberries are going to have different requirements for growing um, than yours. And so what I did is I sent in some tissue samples of my strawberries and I'm having those analyzed. And I'll leave a link below the video if that's something you think you might want to do also. Um, just They do take out-of-state orders. I'm also having my soil looked at closer to and I'm going to do this in both gardens in an attempt to make a custom blend fertilizer for my strawberries. So here's the bed that's been protected and covered and everything looks to be doing pretty well in here. I did check it yesterday. Uh, I think I mentioned that I need to start really looking out for slug damage at this point. And of course I did find some slug damage. Uh, I have some on the cabbages here and some on my broccoli. So you can easily identify slug damage by uh, there should be little ragged holes or little holes in your leaves. And so what I did is I went ahead and treated with slug bait. This is something that I, I have used and I've used it for a few years now. And it is the one thing that I have found that does work. It's called iron phosphate. It is host specific. So it's only going to um, work on slugs and snails. And here is a little... Um, screenshot I took off of the Clemson University rep website that has a little bit more information about it if you'd like to check it out. And so here is some spinach in my third bed and this is what I planted in early March. I also noticed, noticed a little bit of slug damage on here so I went ahead and put slug bait out in my um, beds. You really want to kind of do that very early. I normally will put out slug bait when I'm doing my planting but um, you know, like, I, like I said earlier, there's only so many hours in the day and I think I forgot to bring my slug bait down when I was tending the garden. So there you go. Now I have slug bait in there and it should be under control. So here are my carrots. They're doing fine. The freeze did not affect them and I should see them start to take off here soon. Hopefully we'll start to get some of those regular April rains that I love so much in April. And here is the second planting of spinach that I did in later March. And they are up, and it looks a little dry. It looks like they might need some water, but other than that, they're doing fine. Here's the cilantro. I've been really enjoying this. This is just um, some cilantro that overwintered. One of the plants was really small, but it lived all through the winter, and some of the other ones were a little bit bigger, and they did fine too. So, um, loving using the fresh cilantro. My peas are also doing fine as well. Okay, so I went ahead and sowed my seeds. All through the garden. I won't bore you with that again since I did cover that in another video. And now I'm going to harvest my turnip greens. And um, I always like to do my harvesting after I've tended the garden so that my plants, um, whatever it is that I'm harvesting, doesn't they don't wilt over. And so here you go. I'm going to go ahead and harvest these turnip greens. Now when I was little, my father cooked turnip greens all the time. It was one of his favorite things to cook. And I mentioned before that in the South, we grow turnip greens and we grow just for the greens. We don't grow for turnips. So that's what I have here. And again, they're called seven top turnips. You can find seeds for these online. Um, now I am going to harvest these and I am just going to cook these up southern style like I remember when I was little. I didn't like them when I was little, but I think I'm going to have a newfound appreciation for these now. So southern style basically means I'm going to cook them up with some pork and salt and boil them down to what I call smithereens. That's, well, that's the way a lot of people in the south cook. So I will probably do some recipes on turnip greens for you at a, a later date. I will definitely do the southern style turnip green recipe for you. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.